we've actually turned the corner and we can say we've made the start of a discovery. We know where to go, we know what to go target next, and we'll be drilling here before the summer. I mean, that's fantasy land to have a huge silver discovery sitting on top of a big porphyry, mm. then you've hit the ultimate home run. The point where tier one's at right now is the most compelling I've ever seen it from the beginning. What's up guys, Jay Martin here, investor and host of The Jay Martin Show. And I'm about to share a conversation with you with one of my favorite entrepreneurs in the mining business. His name is Ivan Bebek. So long-term viewers have seen Ivan on my show before. I've interviewed him probably three or four times. He's not just my favorite entrepreneur in the mining industry. He's also the favorite entrepreneur of Ross Beatty, who is arguably the goat in the industry. I don't know of any entrepreneurs who have hit as many home runs as Ross Beatty. Now, why do I follow people like Ivan? Because I'm not reinventing the wheel when I'm investing in small cap equities. I follow the best people. I do my best to find the highest performing entrepreneurs and then just follow them everywhere. And I'm not reinventing this wheel, right? I've had gurus like Rick Rule on my show who told me verbatim, Jay, I would have made 10 times as much money in half the time if I had just invested in the same three or four entrepreneurs throughout my entire career. So look, I follow the greats and I follow good advice. This conversation today with Ivan Bebek is a treat. I hope you enjoy it. Ivan. Hi, Jay. What's up, man? Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Yeah. I'm looking forward to this. Ah, me as well. Okay. Now, the reason that I wanted to talk to you today, like a whole handful of reasons, and we're going to go a web of directions with this conversation. But as you know, I interview like three money managers per week for my show on the podcast, on the YouTube channel. And we go all kinds of directions because everybody focuses on something different. But I always ask one question to everybody, and that is, where are you putting money right now? So where's their value? That's what this question really means, right? For the entirety of 2021, that was an incredibly challenging question to answer because no matter where you looked, everything was hitting all-time highs, right? If you're looking at like broad equities, all-time highs, real estate, all-time highs, crypto, all-time highs. The one answer that I, that I heard most frequently was junior mining equities, which is convenient because I'm very familiar with that sector. I've actually made a lot of money investing in that sector and you've built a handful of companies in that sector. So that's 500% return with Caden Resources, 1800% return with Keegan Resources. But then you made a transition from CEO to chairman. So now you're a manager of people. You have CEOs for companies, right? So talk to me about that transition as a professional and what inspired you to make that jump and how's the adjustment been? Ah, uh, it's the uh, toughest thing I've ever done so far, but great people. Um, first company, first of all, we had a company called Oren Resources, as you know, Yeah. and we found gold, copper, and silver opportunities. So as a large shareholder, and I'm the largest shareholder outside of Newmont in the company, how can I make our shares worth more? That's, that's my mentality. That's the group's mentality. That's my partner's mentality. How can we monetize our share price for investors? Split it because you're not getting paid for all three in one. Well, splitting it, I have two arms, two legs, you know, one head and not enough hair, but uh, <laughs> in, that, in that same breath, um, I, had to f I had to find new people. Um, we started with Fury. I hired a gentleman that did not work out. Mm. His focus was a, for a better market. The market went the opposite direction, so he wasn't the fit. Um, replaced him with an incredible in individual, Tim Clark at Fury. Um, we just sold an asset for about $60 million in marketable securities. We have over two and a half million ounces of high grade and a hundred million dollar market cap. And so Fury is well on its way to turning a huge corner. Um, Tier One Silver, this was a project that I loved in Oren. I championed it with a, a previous geologist of ours yeah. that had since recently, uh, he resigned and moved on from the entire industry. He broke, you know, the market burned him out. It yeah. happens, we can talk about that briefly sure. too. But sure. Um, this was a, a silver opportunity on a belt with some bonanza grade silver that's over a kilo, up to 300 kilo silver. And we found it everywhere, over like 20 square kilometers and, and no one could put their finger on what this meant. And we finally started figuring out what it meant. But Peter Dimbicki, who the CEO is, this is the closest replica to a very important part of myself, which is the ability to market and focus and finance. This guy is nonstop. He works day and night. He's very smart and he's very balanced with his approach and he's really sees it. He believes in it. And I think if I look back at my biggest strengths, it's work ethic and it's that never ending, you know, spirit 
Now he won the world championship in rowing, so he had that in his genes, That's right? right? And then um, Copernico is not public yet, and I'm actually going to be the CEO of that one, and I can't wait. I'm actually losing sleep of how excited I am. Yeah, it's had some some turns along the way, and because this is the risk business, things don't always go the way you plan it, but. When we get to market, probably around June of this year, that's what we're anticipating. Um, this will be my last CEO job likely that I ever do. Okay. And I'll hang back in chairman roles down the road or influential investor, hopefully things go well enough to be there. You've just put out news and it's amazing. So I wanna talk about that. Um, when we first met, or no, when I first interviewed you, it would have been like a year and a half ago. You know, we'd known each other for longer, but it was the first time I had you on the show. And I think you told me verbatim, you're like, Jay, I wake up dreaming about exploration and my entire life I've always wanted a silver discovery. So let's let's get into tier one because you guys just put out your phase one drill results at Kurabaya and let's talk about this. Yeah, so we, we, took, we took on a huge swing. And if you listen to our marketing before we drill those first holes, we think we have a shot at one of the world's biggest, highest grade silver discoveries in the last 20 years. That has come from fantasy to a lot closer to a possible reality. And the last whole meter and a half of 1.2 kilo silver. Can you put that in context for someone who doesn't yeah. maybe know geology, a yeah. meter and a half of 1.2 kilo silver? So, so if you can find, if you can drill, anything above a kilo silver is extremely high grade, it's extremely rare. A lot of silver mines that are drilled near surface are 100 to 250 gram silver maximum. This is narrower high grade, but it's not high grade in the silver world, it's bonanza grade, which we use as a word to describe like exuberant grade where you could drill a very short distance and have a huge amount of ounces and mm. tremendous amount of profitability. So real simply put, um, if you're looking for a lottery, a fantasy type of a discovery, a lottery type result, if you could drill that same result, maybe three or four or five times you'd be on to a crazy discovery in the silver world. And if it was repeating, you could be on to one of the world's biggest because you add up ounces really fast when the grade's high. Um, this property had 20 square kilometers of bonanza grade on surface. Yeah. And we were like, well, is this just enriched to the surface? Or mm -hmm. is there a possibility that it's coming from underneath the surface? And that's what the drilling showed. We drilled earlier on a meter of 1.5 kilogram silver as right. well. So in a few places, we started to see this really high grade on surface beneath the surface. And what we've learned at the back of these first 16 holes is we've learned exactly where we should be targeting the high grade silver in the system or where we think we should be. And what I mean by that is when these systems are created, imagine an underground engine like a volcano underground coming to surface. As it's bringing all the metal up, there's going to be a zone of base metals. And then there's going to be a zone of precious metals. We're calling this an intermediate sulfidation technical term. But anyway, sure. you have base metals like copper, molybdenum, all of those metals. And then you get into the silver and gold. And we learned that in the topography of where we're at, there's a certain elevation point. If you, you can draw a line horizontally on it and you can see our best surface results, the best drill result. And then you go up the hill and our best trenches that we've done to date are up there. And we've got over two kilometers to expand on what we just drilled. Right. So we now know where to go in the system. And in early interviews when we were exploring it, everyone was cheering on this big discovery. And I said, I just want to know where we are in the system. Mm. Because once we know where we are, the hit rate's going to go way up. Now, for a fact, if you're a statistics person, 30% of our holes hit ec potential economic grade mineralization, meaning it would make it into a mine plan. We did not focus on any one hit. We wanted to okay. try all the different veins that were coming up. We want to figure out where to go. Because you want to just blanket the area, get as many hints as possible so you know where to go next. And, and that's, that's basically idea? it. And yeah. now we do. And that was our outcome. And now we know exactly where to go. And the next program we drill, we believe, will be way better than the last program. But if you take the one hit that we drilled, and if this is the surface, and say there's a, a vertical vein coming up, we drilled across one of it, we got to go drill series of holes underneath it mm -hmm. to expand that discovery. And that might be already it. We might right. already have it. So the market's a funny place and your share price in some worlds actually depicts your success, but it's the biggest misnomer if you go to the crypto world and things are flying. Yeah. If you go to the mining world, you take the largest gold companies in the world and they're down 40% 
best earnings they've ever had. Yeah. Profit hand over fist. Better Bar- management. Barrick's doing a billion dollar buyback of their shares. Yeah. But their stock is not doubling. It should be doubling. Mm-hmm. But these companies have never worked better, but their share price is low. So my point to everybody is ask about the fundamentals and time your share price anxiety with the market and ask, Will your company trade at a better price because of the fundamentals in a good market? And the answer is overwhelmingly yes for tier one. Mm. We've actually turned the corner and we can say we've made the start of a discovery. We know where to go. We know what to go target next. And we'll be drilling here by before the summer. Right. With this new data. And what, I mean, it was the very last hole that you drilled, right? That gave you this. On Fury Gold Mines, the best hole out of the entire program was the last hole drilled at uh, Eau Claire. It okay. was also the last hole drill at Committee Bay last year. And now hmm. Tier 1 was the 16th hole. Interesting. Serendipitous, weird. It's the, the last hole at the very end has been the best hole. Now, in terms of what would we have done differently? Had we known this early on in the program, we would have drilled three or four holes underneath it. And we would have started following it along the way to see if we could have given three or four holes that all had plus kilograms over a meter and a half. Of course. And then my yeah. earlier point, you'd be on to those that big silver discovery that I've talked about. Stock's going to be volatile, Jay. And mm. you saw it opened. I'm going to use Canadian prices here at $1.90 Canadian. Silver was around $30 an ounce. Yeah. Silver went down to $22.50 an ounce and we're trading down at $0.65. Cents. But our project is 10 times better than it was back when it was there. Yeah. And that's that's the disconnect we have to change for the market, and we're gonna we're gonna do that here before we turn the drills again. Yeah, and there's only so much you can change for the market, right? You guys just gotta get to work, right? Keep delivering, right? And eventually, you know, the market will turn. But it's up to investors to recognize what a contrarian opportunity is. But it's hard to do that, right? It's hard to go in when everybody's running away, when there's froth everywhere else, and you're like, I'm going to the quiet room over there, right? Well, that's where all the money's made, right? That's where all the money's so- made. So um, Philo Mining, amazing hole, the Lundin yeah. Group, uh, Lucas Lundin, who I've had a chance to work with as a, he was an investor in early on in Keegan days. Right. Um, 15 years to hit the huge hole they just hit that yeah. some 800 meter intercept of 2% copper, and then they hit a crazy silver hole just recently as well. 15 years, Jake, mm. we're in year and a half in to tier one silver with this project. Mm. And I'm not saying it's another 13 and a half years, we spend aggressively. We're a really intense group because we try to shorten the timeline of learning so we can get to discovery or we can move on to our other assets because we have to move on to the other assets and make a discovery elsewhere. Yeah. But now you're, you're senior VP of exploration, Christian Rios, and he's Mr. Peru. So, so this guy right? was there from the beginning. Christian Rios, he studied under David Lowell. And if you know Marin Katusa, you've heard a lot about David Lowell, the late David Lowell, who was mm. a legendary mine finder found Escondida, the largest porphyry in the world in Chile and several others. He worked with David for four years. He's been part of five discoveries in Peru, two of which were silver discoveries in Bear Creek mining. And we heard one too many times from Christian, oh, this is just like this discovery I was part of, or that's just like what I saw here, this is there. And we started to hear that a lot in the last quarter when we started to get more information. And his input became more and more valuable. Whether Dave stayed or left, mm. Christian was going to have a much bigger role because his background through two big silver discoveries not far away yeah. was becoming imperative in the target plan forward. Dave had us on the right track, but experience started to weigh over technical curiosity, mm. right? So he has the experience. He's been there. And the first thing he did was he went to site with all of our geologists plus two world experts that we rely on. At the end of every program we do, we go find the smartest people in the world about silver or about epithermal systems or about potential porphyries. And we give them all of our data. They walk on every single vein we've seen or every sample result we've had. And then they all download as a group. They give us two independent reports. They have no shares in our company. Mm-hmm. They have no cash. There's no conflict. And they say, this is what you have. And what we did then is we took the two reports, we overlapped them collaboratively, looked at it as a team okay. and everything said, Go drill where we drilled, Sambaya, the, the big hit we've had, Sambalai. Mm. Go drill Kambaya, where the best trenches are and surface results are. It's higher in the system where you should be. Yep. And go drill the Tapal Corridor. It tells us that where we drilled a little deeper, we're getting in towards a porphyry. And we're seeing evidence of a porphyry, which mm. is also huge because 
some of the largest porphyry, which is copper and gold deposits in the world, mm -hmm. from Cerro Verde, I think it's number four in the world, Tocopala, Kiaveco, they're all on this trend. And so we're in the same trend as some of the largest mines in the world. And we have two types of investors from the corporate world. Some who want to see the porphyry, okay. some who want to see the big silver discovery. <clears throat> but to actually have both in one project, in the next program we drill, we're actually going to test both. We're going to continue on the silver, but we are going to drill like a kilometer deep hole into that porphyry. And if okay. we can deliver both, Jay, that goes beyond, I mean, that's fantasy land to have a huge silver discovery sitting on top of a big porphyry, mm. then you've hit the ultimate home run. Now I'm a speculator. I love exploration to the point where I lose sleep on it. I dream mm -hmm. how programs will go. I visualize all the time and it's worked out extremely well. I will say that the point where tier one's at right now is the most compelling I've ever seen it from the beginning. You know, mm -hmm. when you see a bunch of high grade that doesn't make sense, that could be like endless high grade silver, that was the first look but you, you couldn't go to sleep or finish your beer with the same confidence that this is it for sure until you drilled underneath and found out what's underneath this. Where's the plumbing of all of that silver? Right. Now we know where the plumbing is. That's what we feel. And that's what we're going to drill next. Okay. So talking about that timeline, because phase one is now complete. Uh, when, when will you begin phase two? So phase two starts today. I okay. Mean, we, we are now, we will put out a press release early March showing everybody exactly what we've learned and what we're doing. And it's going to actually give us a chance to all speculate on the probability of how right we think we really are. So there's going to be a big reveal done and you're going to get the pieces of that for about two months before we turn a drill. Okay. So, so we're, we're likely drilling at the latest in May, possibly okay. June, but, but ideally May. The only thing that would deter that right now would be if something unforeseen happened, global issue with the war, what have you, who knows who what. Knows? Yep. But right now we're, we're on schedule for about two months of work and then we get to drilling. But the exciting part's gonna be when we start to show all the things we've learned to put context behind, we think we have it now. We're gonna actually reveal that. So you and all your readers and listeners are gonna actually see where we're going, where we're gonna turn the drill. Mm -hmm. And you'll be able to speculate, as will we, we're mm -hmm. very transparent about it, how good the shot is for this to continue and to be one of two or both of those discoveries that I mentioned. And a key thing, I mean, you keep on mentioning how you're a speculator too, you know, alongside us, I think that, correct me if I'm wrong, you know, executives, management, close associates own 40% of tier one silver. You uh, guys eat your own cooking. At least that. At yeah. least that. And we're buying more. Like that's, that's the most important bu bullet point. Well, that's the thing. Over and above everything else. You know what? It'd be really easy to sit on the sidelines and be our armchair quarterback. Yeah. But we get into yeah. it. We put our money where our mouth is. Yeah. We are all uncomfortably long in a good way because we want to be because we think we might have. It. Mm. And then when you look at upside potential, you got to, I'll use a, a lottery ticket in the US because I, I live in the US half time. Um, super lotto, not the regular local lotto. It's a super lotto ticket. That's really what a big silver discovery offers, right? Mm. So we have that upside. It can be revealed with one drill hole. You could hit 10 meters of 10 kilo silver if the profile of the system is big, which is what we've absolutely proven to the world that it is big. Mm -hmm. It could be one drill hole that makes that super lotto type of return that's on silver. And then we'll also have a second ticket on the porphyry. And that to me is why I do this. It takes a lot of time out of my day, out of my family, out of my life, you know, is, is, is pure dedication to this. Mm -hmm. My chip is not about making this okay, doubling or tripling the stock and and making X dollars. My chip is about, do we have the world, one of the world's biggest? Is mm -hmm. this really that phenom target we think we have? I want to find that answer out in one of the best silver markets I think we're ever going to see in our careers starting here and hopefully in the very near future. I love that. And yeah, I love the skin of the game. Like I said, it is the most important data point for me. You get paid when I get paid. That's what that means to me, right? Yeah. Truthfully. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I get paid only if shareholders get paid. Yeah. I've, uh, I've held all my previous companies right to the end. You know, there's two things. Either it's liquid at maximum return and we're well into the double digits trading yep. there. I might take some off the table at that point. As you should. But primarily it's, we aim for something big enough that a big company would take over. Mm. And our methodology is all of our geologists come from majors. We've worked with companies that have either been bought out or they've been buying them out at majors. So we take that pedigree to understand what scale really means to them. 
You know, how big does this have to be? You know, what could this turn into? And that's how we design our business plan is we design it with the, with the end result in front of us. So my goal is to be retired in the next three years. And that means that all four companies got bought out. That's my goal. I love that goal. And, and that's it. <laughs> As a shareholder, I love that goal. If, if I'm right, you'll do extremely well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so let's, uh, I want to talk about the scale of the next drill program. You finished on such a high, right? That final hole of your phase one drill program. I imagine it exceeded your expectations. It exceeded shareholder expectations. It, it did mine. What's most exciting about that though, is what happens next, right? You have this big hint of where you're going next. You said drills will be, be turning like May, June. Can you talk to me about the scale of that program? What should we look forward to? It, we're, we're defining it now. There's, there's a want and there's a reality, right? Okay. And so what we really want to do is we want to do it in two phases. Take the learning, explore that second phase. It takes about two months to get a result in Peru once you drill. Okay. And be on standby with the ability to hit that way harder and way more aggressive. We sure. want to walk before we run with these new findings. Um, you don't need to drill as much as we drilled to get to the result that we wanted in the first phase. Right. It's very, very it's going to be very focused. It's with a lot of knowledge, a lot of intel, where to go, where to be. So half or less of the cost of what we've done in the first phase. Okay. To get you're known result. for big drill programs, though, if I think about it, right? You put a lot of money in the ground where it should go, right? Yeah. Which I appreciate, Yeah. right? That's your style. Yeah. And so I, I, I'm not going to push that where it should go at low prices. Yeah. I'm going to push it when we start to return and share price starts to performance, mm. right? Mm -hmm. So being large shareholders, we are anti-dilutive. Even though we have more than 20 million shares, or we have 120 million shares out. Right. It's extremely well held. We have some of the best shareholders in the world, not just our inside group, but the people that support us that are making this bet. Mm. And we're training our shareholders as much as we can so they can see the upside before we go and drill so we can all enjoy it together. What we want to do is we want to start with a, with a, a whatever is appropriate size program to get going. And then when you start to see that success happening, silver's performing, that's when we finance and we raise a lot of money and add the five or six rigs into it. Got it. All of what I'm saying could be happening easily within six months of this conversation that we're having today. Mm. So we're ready to go fast, but the project, we're going to start, we're going to hit it pretty aggressively here in the first program that we do or the first phase of the second program. Yep. And we're going to be on standby ready to take it to the next level. What we've been doing in the background, because the first phase was so successful to us, we went from a 40 pad or 40 hole permit where you could drill two, two holes off 20 pads. Now we can drill 10 holes off 20 pads and the area that we're going to was not permitted in our first area. So we can drill 200 holes now with the new permit that we'll have before we start drilling in June. Okay. So that's one other thing we didn't talk about is we were limited of where we could drill because we've never, no one's ever drilled here before. We didn't know where to focus. We knew where to start. And we found out at the end of the program that just north of where we drilled, is the most optimal horizon. It's where the best grades are on surface. We found that out during. And so now we have a permit that's gonna be achieved before we drill that includes all of that area and allows us to do five times as many holes that we were gonna do last year. So right. to your point of going big, yeah. going fast, we are now set up for it on the number one way that's the most difficult challenge perceived and proves to get your permits online. Yeah. And we're in the late stages of completing that second permit. I love that. You, you get to work. It's so important. Okay, now we, we spent the whole time talking about Curabaya. Makes sense because that's where the action is. But you've got another another project, Hurricane, which is some blue sky upside. Let's let's just touch on that real quick. Hurricane Silver. Um, the name is so fitting to what's there. Um, this is high grade silver. It's getting up to over a kilo, up to three kilo on the high side of the silver. But we went there for a short program before weather took over mm. and we lost the year because we were focusing on curry baya. Long, continuous veins of silver, two to four meters wide. And there was signs where heavy equipment or machinery had gone in there to mine the silver veins. That's right. There's adits that go down a few hundred meters that have water in them now. So when you look for a mine, the best way to go find a mine, a silver mine or a gold mine or anything is where there was silver mine before you by sure. old timers that did not have the modern technology to explore it or to extract it. So yes, they've taken a little bit, but they've led us on two big silver veins at Hurricane that lead right to source. And that's going to be the scope of the program. Okay. I think it could be as compelling as Curry Baya. 
I think the probability is different in terms of there's continuous veins on surface. Curibaya, these veins come up to surface, so they're more vertical than linear. Okay. And I think that we barely scratched the surface there, and we are going to aggressively push this towards a drill-ready phase by the end of the year, mm. which will make Tier 1 one of the most mm. aggressive yeah. silver exploration companies globally. And that's what we're trying to do, is we want to corner the country, the second largest producer of silver in the world, where some of the largest silver discoveries occur. We want to be that forefront of two of the largest silver discoveries to give that fantasy type return to shareholders that you can see mm -hmm. in silver discoveries. The reason why I've loved silver my whole life and finally get to go do it. And we got to double down into remarkable assets. I love it. Look, Ivan, thanks for coming to chat with me. Yeah, I love catching up with you. Thanks for having me. It was a pleasure. Yeah, my pleasure, man. Cheers.